thank you so much for subscribing welcome to my new subscribers and welcome back to my old regular subscribers i am back with another video today so i'm burning my candle over here it's from naya beauty um yeah i have it on my instagram anyway so i have decided to start out this new segment on my youtube channel where i talk about 10 things i wish i knew before whatever so for example on today's video i'll be talking about 10 things i wish i knew before i became a mom or before i had a baby right and then maybe next week i'll say 10 things i wish i knew before i don't know i'll see anyway let's get into today's video so part of the 10 things i wish i knew i will be looking down i wrote some things down on my notebook so if i do this just know what i'm reading what is written down here so the first one is where's the first one okay so the first one is postpartum is messy so for those of you that do not know i have a 22 months old baby girl she's turning two in september next month um, but she hasn't turned to 23 months yet So I have a 22 months old baby and postpartum is the stage after you have a baby So there's pregnancy then there's postpartum, right? I don't know how long it lasts, but immediately after you have a baby you are in the postpartum stage So the first point says postpartum is messy first of all um i think it's quite different for a lot of people but specifically for myself it was so messy because you know most before you have a baby you think after if you get long time it'll be so much better you know you'll sleep more you sleep on your stomach because you were not able to do that when you were pregnant so you think that okay once the baby is born i'll sleep on my stomach i'll go out with my friends um I'll be myself once again, you know, I'll feel good, whatever, whatever, whatever. Postpartum is not cute. Um, for me, I had an episiotomy, so they cut my perineum when I was giving birth. So which meant I had a couple of stitches after I gave birth. So those were hella painful. They were hella painful. They were so painful, if you don't understand, hella. They were so, so painful. So I was trying to nurse those stitches firstly. Secondly, I have got a baby. She's crying. Okay, she wasn't crying, I'm lying. She's waking up every two to three hours. She has to be breastfed every two to three hours, which means nah. If I sleep at seven, I'm up at nine or ten. Let's say three hours. I don't remember. So if I sleep at seven, at ten I'm up breastfeeding. Okay. Level twelve. One I'm up breastfeeding. Four AM I'm up breastfeeding. Seven AM I'm up breastfeeding. And you can't breastfeed lying on your side when you've got a newborn. Um, you have to sit up, right? That's what I was told, poof, get by my mom. So every three hours, I'm sitting up and breastfeeding. Every three hours, I'm sitting up and breastfeeding, you know? So also, I can't sit gagunche. It's kind of painful. So, you know, it's messy. Yeah, well. Um, also, my boobs are painful. I had engorgement, so my milk was starting to come in. My boob or my body didn't know how much milk my baby will need, so it was really painful when I was breastfeeding. I think engorgement is called I don't know, but my boobs were engorged. Go very less um membranes. Are they called membranes? But you know. So, gee, if I, I never knew that postpartum was going to be like that. I never knew. I thought in that, gee, it's going to be, you know, my mom is here. She'll help me. She'll take care of the baby. I will sleep when the baby sleeps. Sometimes during the day when the baby sleeps, I can't sleep. I can't fall asleep. I am not I get my baby, I'm not so I couldn't sleep, you know. So, number one, postpartum is messy. I wish I knew that before I had a baby. Number two is there is no normal for babies right a lot of people that have babies or that had babies before you will try to come into your life and come into your space and give you advice you did not ask for because they think what worked for them is supposed to work for you and it is not like that there is no normal for babies if someone else tells you that why are you starting solids at three months for example i don't know you know 
Um, obviously, we are advised to start solids after six months or four to six months, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. But whatever happens, I mean, at the end of the day, your PEDS doctor will advise you on to when you can start, when the baby is ready. A lot of things babies do when they are ready. So there is no normal for babies. Some babies, my baby used to sleep and wake up just a little bit and go back to sleep again. Some babies are wide awake and it doesn't mean they are sick or whatever. It's just who they are. You know, when I think it, it's not normal for my son and son and son for a long time. It's not normal for the baby to be awake for such a long time. Is it normal for you to be stuck into my business? It's not normal. There is no normal for babies. Whatever works for you and your family works for you and your family. I'm like, I thought my nyan because when I was pregnant, I did a lot of research about a lot of things which mostly did help me but sometimes i would be so frustrated thinking that yo why is it not happening this way um google said this you know going to get there's no normal for babies whatever works works whatever doesn't work does not work number three is trust your intuition so this one worked for me so much so much um if you watched my previous video about um, our experience at a public hospital. You will see how much this one worked for me. Even I was using, okay, you know, stuff like, for example, when to start with solids. My baby started solids when she was five and a half months because I felt like she was ready. And I started seeing her and I was starting to lose a bit of weight and I was like, it's time for solids. Even though I was initially waiting for six months, but I was like, ah, no, I think it's time, you know? So as a mom, especially, I'm not sure as a dad, I've never been a dad before, believe it or not, I'm joking. As a mom, trust your intuition. It's mostly correct when it comes to your baby, okay? Now, four says that surround yourself with moms, with kids, your baby's age, huh? Surround yourself with moms with babies that are your baby's age. Yes. So for me, fortunately, I was pregnant at the same time with two of my friends. Literally, with one of my friends, we gave birth like two to three days apart. Then my other friend gave birth in October, a month after me. So it was so great because I would be like, yo, dude, I'm not sleeping. I think I'm sick. And she would be like, I'm not sleeping too. And I think, oh, okay, so it's normal in pregnancy to not sleep, or it's common, you yeah, know. And maybe something else, say for instance, when I when my baby went for the twelve months injection, when she came back home, she got a bit sick the following day, and I thought it like it was teething. A month later, my friend texted me saying that her baby is sick; she had to go home because the baby was her baby was home. So she was like, she has to go home, her baby is sick, she thinks she has this, this other, there was this other new sickness that was going on, on what's that, but I don't need to drink robots, I don't know if you saw it, and she thought her baby had that, because Kaputa, she's really sick, she has high temperature, she's vomiting, I think, and I was like, wait, when she, when did she get her 12 months injection? And she was like, she got it yesterday. And then I was like, no, man. I think it's the same thing that I had. Because also, the day after I had an injection, the 12 months injection, she got a bit sick. So that could be it. It turns out in Yang, it was the injection. And a couple of other things as well, you know. It taught like 10 times. Sometimes I get so annoyed thinking, yo, this girl is testing my patients. Then I test my other friend as well. And I'm like, yo, dude, how is your baby? And she'll be like, yo, when drive are crazy. And I'll just think, oh, well, we're in this together. So if you don't know I was pregnant, it's, I would advise that really you look up into, you look into the mom pages and the mom support groups to call them because that can really, really help you calm down as a mom. So I didn't know this when I was pregnant or before I had a baby that that would actually work in my advantage. But it did help me quite a lot. So, yeah, surrounding myself with moms with babies my baby's age really did help. Number five says, be a great team with your partner. So with this one, I just think, Jay, it's basically on the surface. You should be a 
great team with a partner in everything but especially in parenting right of which i don't think it's spoken about a lot and i think it should be for example um i think us as moms myself as well included we think we know everything when it comes to babies and when their dads try to do some things we're like ah, i'm a man i got this i know it should be done like this yeah but and then sometimes it could create a division between you and your partner so, so part of the things is allowing your partner to also be a parent to the child and do things his way sometimes do things your way and then you meet in the middle and find common ground so because now if you're fighting about something you're not a great team you're not agreeing on the same things you'll end up being grumpy and then there's not going to be happiness in the house and then when the baby starts being grumpy as well you get grumpy yeah and then a whole lot of commotion so being great team with your partner helps because because we're going to create atmosphere in the house if you don't live with your partner i feel like even if you don't live with your partner um being great team with your partner and genuine communication when it comes to the baby it will really help you guys be happier and when you're happy parents you're gonna have a happy baby i think so and the next pointer i forgot what number we're on i think it's six or seven i don't know says enjoy every step you guys with this one honestly guys i heard Guta, they grow up fast but they grow up really fast so enjoy every step i know sometimes when you've got a newborn it seems as though yo he was a cooling nini she's waking up all the time he's crying all the time yo i feel like if you've got a newborn baby enjoy cuddling her in your arms while they're not bitizzling wanting to go run away because they'll grow up and they will not want to be held in your arms for a long time so i think every step is a very very precious step and you should enjoy every moment of it and even even the tantrums actually enjoy every step because i think one day we will miss the tantrums because they are so frustrating especially in public guys babies will draw tantrums in public and i'll just be like what should i do now so yeah just try to enjoy every step of motherhood or parenthood the next one is learn to power nap well like i said in the previous step or in the previous point i mentioned i'm not a very good sleeper especially during the day guys i do not love sleeping during the day and i didn't know that not not loving to sleep during the day will be a challenge in my motherhood or in my postpartum days but i wish i was a good napper i wish i was a good power nap person i wish i knew that um i should learn to power nap because if you don't sleep during the day and you've got a newborn and at night you probably won't sleep still eventually you're gonna become a zombie eventually you're gonna become tired you will be worn out because you're not sleeping so we're not resting you understand so i feel like i wish i knew that i was supposed to learn how to power nap so that when baby sleeps i sleep i never slept when baby slept except at the during the night during the day when she sleeps i'm like oh she's sleeping time for me to do something i can't do when she's awake which is some errand around the house maybe or something like that so i think it's really really important to learn how to power nap during the day when the baby is also sleeping it'll help you as a mom or as a parent to rejuvenate yourself that so that when she wakes up again and you also wake up you are full of good energy and good to go but the next point is things will not be the same i was actually listening to a podcast um milena and Milena CCOT. What's her husband's name? So they were talking about this thing of wanting things to go back to how they were before you had a baby, right? And her husband made a really, really good point um, and said that, guys, I did my nails last week. Her husband did a really, like, made a really good point um, by saying that you wanting for things to go back to how they were before you had a baby is like a person trying to fit a square 
into a circle box or into a circle hole it'll never fit because it's not the same thing you're not the same person you were before you had a baby whether you live with a baby or not you are not the same person something will be different if you don't live with the baby okay maybe there will be a few different things but it will not be the same especially if you live with your child it will be different and the sooner i accept that the better so that you can try and make your life after baby even more amazing than it was before you had a baby right i'm not sure for the longest time after i had a baby i'm not gonna lie i was trying to get my old life back i was like yo i can't wait for her to, to start solid so i can go back to my life can't for her to start breastfeeding so i can get my life back and then i realized no man i don't have to get my old life back i just need to make a new great amazing life for myself and to be honest i'm actually happier than i was before i had a baby believe it or not because i told myself that i'm going to be more happier than i was before i had a baby right and accept the fact that okay we are doing this so let's make the best of it right and then that's what i did so if i had known before i had a baby that things will be different just make the best of it because Two things can either happen after you have a child. You have a greater life you did before you have a baby. You had a baby, or you have worse. And it's up to us to try. I'm not saying it's up to you to make it amazing, but it's up to us to try to have a better life or a great life after baby, without trying to get your old life back. The next point is, it is harder than it looks well people look at our pictures and decide that it's so easy guys social media i think you guys all know this by now it's always pushed by people social media is like two percent or i mean 2.5 percent or 1.5 percent of what really happens in real life we don't post everything it's not always easy it's actually harder than it looks but you know it's very nice it's actually one of those things that you don't know how to explain you just don't know how to make people understand that it's hard but it's a, it's a nice hard like it's a hard you don't want to stop doing you know so yeah the second last point is breastfeeding is not always easy so it depends on people as well with some people their milk doesn't always come easily they have to eat a lot more than they used to and drink a lot more than they used to liquids um non-alcoholic liquids and i'm joking i'm joking <laughs> they have to drink and eat a lot more than they used to right um and when it comes to the baby's latch it's not easy sometimes like i said with myself my boobs were so engorged when i started but it's not always easy as well but it's so much nice like i just went my baby from the boob um last week or two weeks back i'm joking last week i'm still trying to win her off and i can just say that oh my girl you know she's doing fine she she's doing okay i'm the struggling person i'm the one that's struggling i want to give her the boob all the time but i always have to just like remind myself that no she's stopping she's quitting don't give it to her i just miss breastfeeding so it's not always easy but it is definitely also awesome well personally i enjoyed breastfeeding so much of which as a person that has never breastfed you would never think it can be sometimes difficult but yes some moms actually end up not breastfeeding because it's definitely not easy so if you're a mom and you would love to breastfeed i think you need to do a lot of research before you have before you fall pregnant and then while you are pregnant as well try to do a lot of research and onto how to encourage your milk to come through you know after have a baby and the last point is it will get better my personal experience is that every month of baby is better than the previous so i know sometimes you would think that as a person you and this up being toddlers they're so troublesome they've got these tantrums that they're having 
it's still so great like i don't know how to explain it but if as a mom you have a newborn baby and you're struggling to sleep you're not handling it well please rest assured mommy it will definitely get better it is so amazing to be a mom especially excuse me especially if you try to enjoy it so that's it for me from today i hope you guys did enjoy this video like i said i'll be doing a whole segment of 10 things i wish i knew before whatever so please stay tuned for my next video and i hope you did enjoy this one please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and please don't forget to go watch more of my videos if this is the first one you're watching or if you, if or if you haven't watched my previous ones please go watch and support your girl please also comment down below and say whatever even if you just say hi roundy hi mommy or give us your experience on how you were when you were a first time mom or whatever just please support your girl and like the video and comment down below and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already see you on my next video